Hello everyone, my name is John Dole, and welcome to the Ghost Slayers Report, right from Tokyo, Japan. Now as you notice today, I'm inside. Uh, I used to do a lot of these inside, but you got used to me being outside, but today, a little windy out there. So it's anyways, let's get to it. Now we've all heard um, Shinzo Abe's comments about Fukushima, everything's under control, as he keeps stating. Now I did a video that immediately after the decision was made to have the Olympics in Tokyo after 2020 and we announced it and broke it down there. But let's look at what's been going on actually here in Japan since that time. Now Shinzo Abe recently made a visit to the actual Fukushima Daiichi plant and some things he said here. Now it starts out where Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe ordered the operator of the plant, of course TEPCO, our good friends, uh, recently to shut down all six reactors. Instead of just four, already stated for decommissioning, and to concentrate on tackling more pressing issues that lead to leaks of radioactive water. Now, from the get-go there, uh, Mr. Abe's announcement here to decommission, well, you have four reactors that are beyond decommissioning point. You have four reactors that three are completely melted down, and one is heavily damaged. So before you mention decommissioning, you need to talk about getting things under control, as Mr. Abe talks about. Yeah, under control will be nice before we talk about decommissioning. Now, there's a few more tidbits of this story here. It says, after taking a first-hand look at the Fukushima Daiichi plant, Abe insisted that the radioactive water had been contained at the complex and said he would fend off rumors regarding Fukushima's safety. There's, it's a joke. It's a joke, what he's saying. That cannot be taken seriously. It's been proven time and time again. The media has proved this. Um, independent reporters have proved this. That the, the situation is not under control. And the leaks are not contained. And him fending off rumors is basically him um, playing politics to hide, lie, and cover up what's going on. Now, he... Ex toward the plant for about three hours. Um, now, that's when he instructed the um, TEPCO to shut down 5 and 6. It's probably already planned way ahead of time. And it's just more of a um, political grandstanding to say it in public. Now, here's exactly what he says. He said, I told TEPCO to ensure decommission of reactor 5 and 6 so they can concentrate more on dealing with the accident. Reactor 5 and 6, as I keep saying here, are not the biggest problem. Are they stable? Are they under control? At least we have that at Fukushima Daiichi. Focus on the bigger thing instead of doing a side thing where Abe can say, look, we're decommissioning reactors. We're doing a good job up there. Everything's under control. And then completely ignoring or failing to even acknowledge the horrible crisis that keeps on going there at that plant. Now, TEPCO president, <clears throat> Naomi Hirose, uh, told Abe that a decision on reactors will be made by the end of the year. So basically, they're going to try to time this somehow. Um, they got to work it out where they can actually start to decommission those, which you could de decommission five and six on normal conditions, I guess. They're going to probably time that just right, I imagine. Now, when Abe was asked what his main focus of visiting the plant was, he said that one of the main purposes of this visit was to see it for myself. After I made those remarks on how the containment water has been handled. He's referring back there to the IOC thing where he said everything's under control. And it's just pretty ironic and uh, slightly funny if it wasn't so true that he had never actually seen the situation himself. 
He was making statements about things he didn't even know about firsthand. And he's supposed to be the leader of the country. All right. Uh, now you see that, all right? Now if you think that things are all quiet here at home, oh no, there were some backlashes to all these things I've been saying. Um, a local town assembly, severely affected by the Fukushima disaster, took issue with Prime Minister Abe's assurance to the IOC committee members that the Fukushima nuclear crisis is under control. Now, here's what they say. We strongly protest Abe's irresponsible comment. The town assembly of Nami, Name Fukushima Prefecture said, in a unanimous ad adopted opinion uh, recently, protesting Abe's assertions. Now, in the statement, it says, Abe's statement has grave problems that fly in the face of fact. They added that to their adopted opinion. Two and a half years after the onset of the nuclear incident caused by the Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami, all residents of Name are still evacuees. Very true. So the opinion said the daily flow of 300 tons of polluted groundwater into the Pacific Ocean constitutes an emergency. It called on the central government to resolve the situation by retracting the government's declaration in December 2011 that the crisis was under control. The opinion also stated that more than 290 people from the town have died as a result of the evacuations. What they're referring to there is the suicides that go on amongst evacuees as well as elderly who simply give up the, the will to live. I've been pulled from a home they grew up in and never, probably never left. This is out in the countryside. They're put in the big cities and little evacuee areas. And yeah. That's exactly what they're referring to there. Now, in Tokyo, our governor here, Mr. Um, Naoki Inose, has countered Abe's claim that things are under control. He said, the leakage of contaminated water is not under, not necessarily under control at this stage. Onoshi told reporters at a news conference that it was very important for the general, for the central government to demonstrate its resolve to get things under control and done right by providing accurate facts and funds for it. It's his officials should strive towards resolving it. So you see there, very strong words and very strong reactions from people here in Japan regarding everything that Shinzo Abe has been doing publicly with Fukushima. This situation is slowly but surely getting out of control to the point where maybe they won't be able to handle it anymore. And we still see here Shinzo Abe saying things like this and you see what's going on on the home front. right? But we're not done there exactly. Look at internationally how the reaction to things have been. We have, no, we have to look no further than um, former U.S. nuclear regulatory um, ch uh, chairman and now uh, avowed anti-nuclear activist, Mr. Gregory Zazko. Now, Mr. Zazko has said that he was surprised how long it took for Japan to start tackling the problem at Fukushima. Mr. Zazko said that U.S. and Japanese officials knew leaks would occur when massive amounts of water were used to cool molten reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi plant after the major earthquake and tsunami hit in March of 2011. So they knew this was coming. Now, he said the Japanese government was concerned that the flooding of those reactor vessels and reactor buildings um, with cooling water would lead to greater leakage of groundwater. Now, whereas the NRC emphasized the need to keep reactors cool and under control to minimize airborne contamination. So you see, the NRC knew that by putting water on air is going to be bad. And you have to prepare, prepare for that. Whereas the Japanese government said, no, no, no. We don't want to deal with the potential problem. 
Uh, nor do we want to try to cool these reactors down with the only available method. Now you know that happened way back in March 2011, and because Japan, the Japanese government, did not prepare for this properly, we have this situation now. We got tanks leaking. Damn it! We got water going everywhere. Okay, so it's clear they didn't. They didn't. But as Gregory here says, they didn't do anything for a long time. They sit there, did nothing. They didn't prepare for it. They knew this was coming, right? Now he says, to finish up his quotes, he said, but the focus was lost on the need to keep addressing the radioactive water problem, apparently delaying action on mitigating the problem, says Zaskol, who was in Japan at the invitation of the anti-nuclear citizens group. He resigned as chairman of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission last year, and it was earlier this year where he came out and said, look, I'm anti-nuclear. I'm going to fight this. Right. Now, with all this that we know, all these reactions, the things that are going on here, there's one group who's often forgotten, and I've done videos on them. It's the workers at Fukushima. And to tell you just how they're faring with things, we look at a um, June... Shugimura, she's a lecturer uh, in the psychiatry department of the National Defense Medical College, who says the workers are at a higher risk of radiation exposure, and they are part of a process that will last for decades. On top of that, they are criticized for being part of TEPCO. They are not company executives, but they feel a sense of guilt and responsibility even though they were not the perpetrators. So they deserve more respect, as they are doing one of the hardest jobs in the world. Now, public criticism and slow pace of decommissioning, coupled with the stress of working at the site, have prompted several TEPCO workers to quit. It's more than several. It's in mass. Um, the company does lots of tricks and things to retain your workers at this point. Try and give them perks, protection. If that doesn't work. They intimidate them to stay. And that's the one group, you know, that's forgotten of Abe and his political games. The, ex the harsh and rightfully so reaction here in the home front here in Japan. And international experts being dumbfounded by all of this that's going on in Japan. Still, the one group who catches hell from all sides are the workers. And that's something that should never be forgotten. Even as we have the Japanese government acting like maniacs and being foolish and TEPCO being foolish and trying to hide things, cover things up, it's the workers who suffer the most. I thank you very much for watching this video and taking the time to. If the first time you see me on YouTube, please subscribe. You get lots of videos like this, tons of other stuff as well. So hope you do subscribe. Until next time, this is me, John Dole, in Tokyo, Japan. Checking out.